Rusty is the name of this man. He used to be an American soldier, a teacher, and the coach of the school club's American football team. He taught at that orphanage that afternoon. He and his family will move to an orphanage in Texas, where he will work as a teacher. When Rusty's family got to the orphanage, a teacher named Frank walked up to them while they were talking. All of a sudden, the police showed up with a teenager who was covered in blood. The policeman told Hardy that his father had been killed two days before and that his mother had just left, leaving him alone with his dead father. Frank asks the police to take Hardy to the school's health clinic while he takes Rusty and his family to their new home. Rusty's wife, Juanita, was disappointed when they saw that the house was in bad shape. If her husband hadn't asked her to move that night, she wouldn't have. Juanita had a hard time falling asleep. Rusty tries to make her feel better by telling her he will clean the house. When Juanita is sleeping, Rusty thinks about the past, like when he and his brother had to live and grow up in an orphanage. At that time, the government never paid attention to the children in the orphanage. They were only seen as a burden on society. Now that he is an adult, he is determined to serve so that the orphanage children can get a good education. After cleaning the house the night before, a Rusty met a health worker named Doc Hall and Frank were talking when they heard the sound of Pandy children fighting. Doc tries to protect the kids because he is afraid they will get in trouble. He told Frank that all they had done was talk about American football. Tomorrow, Rusty really wanted to start a football team at the orphanage school, but the head of the orphanage didn't think it would happen. In the afternoon, however, he gave Rusty his blessing. On his first day of teaching, Rusty didn't understand why almost all of the students already knew how to count or read everything, but he still taught them with great. After the lesson, Rusty sent the kids out to the field right away to see how well they could play football. Ready? Hi. You can't wrap up your opponent and put their head down. What's going on? Hardy. Whoa. Son, that's fine. By the next day, in the office of the head of the orphanage, Frank said, you just got your bell working here. What Rusty did didn't matter because the orphans didn't have any skills. It would be better for them to learn how to print brochures so they can work in factories when they get older. So, Frank had been telling the kids to print brochures to sell without the head of the orphanage knowing about it. He did this in the middle of class. He didn't even think twice about hitting them with a stick if they made a noise. Unfortunately, the head of the orphanage, who didn't know about the abuse of children, thought Frank was a good teacher. This led the head of the orphanage to call Rusty and tell him to stop coaching football. He felt like he learned more about the work world than just the sports world. After all, reading and writing skills, not sports, are also part of what it takes to pass the test. Even just to read one sentence now. The orphans still don't speak English well, but instead of giving up, Rusty became even more determined. He was sure he could teach them even more with the help of his wife. Those, those are what they are. But we will work hard to learn so that we can pass this test together, which is not something most boys can say. You need to get on track. Is this test going to cover things about women? Chart my skills. Oh, snap boys. It's a Dutch word. Meyer, Texas will show you how to act like ladies. Thank you. When exam day came, all the students tried to figure out the questions they were given the night before in the yard. If the kids don't pass, Rusty looks worried. In contrast to her husband, Juanita looks pretty calm. Since he started helping teach here, he has started to accept the situation and is even happier than he was where he was living before that afternoon. The head of the orphanage came to them while he was playing football and told them how he did on yesterday's tests. Only five of the 17 kids failed, while the rest got average grades. I just heard the announcement. They were happy and went back to practice, but because he was so excited, he kicked the ball too hard and aloe vera hit it, breaking it. Practice had to stop until the ball was fixed. A few days after that, Rusty and Doc went there for a meeting of the Interschool Football League. Rusty put Masonic home as the name of his football team when he signed them up. But the president of the league said no because Rusty's school didn't have enough. According to the rules, every school has to have at least 500 students. Doc then said that, according to the rules, even though there are fewer students from Masonic Home, they can still join if the other schools don't mind. After a long discussion, the committee decided that the Masonic Home team could join the Interschool Football All-Championship. When Rusty told the kids what the meeting decided when he got back from there, they all looked very. It was the first time in their lives that orphans, who had always been seen as a burden, could hope for success. They had been practicing for weeks until the day of the Interschool Tournament. But since this is the first time the Masonic team has played and they aren't all on the same page yet, none of the kids can play well. Even though Hardy got the first point, the referee took it away because his friend did something wrong. The whole team fights and points fingers at each other, but Rusty and Doc tried to calm them down even though they were embarrassed. Masonic home lost their first match 30 to 50. The next day, Rusty was feeling dizzy and trying to think of a new formation when he saw his daughter drawing something. When asked what she was doing, her little girl said she was drawing a football formation like her dad did. Rusty had an idea right away that night, and just as the kids were about to take a shower, he sent them all out of the house. On the outside, he seems to have learned a new strategy from his daughter. Not the same as the old formation. This formation relies less on physical strength in the middle of the field and more on attacking speed to move to the outside of the field. So, no matter how big the other team is, they won't be able to catch up with the speed of a Masonic team. 
Rusty asked the kids what they thought about this new formation, but everyone was still negative and didn't know how to win. Rusty was upset that his football team was trying so hard to win. He then told me that he had lived in the same orphanage since he was a child. Rusty felt alone and left out. He doesn't have parents who are there to cheer him on. Even so, he never gave up and kept fighting for what he wanted to become. He wants all the orphans here to be as strong-minded as he is. Then, in the middle of the cold night, Rusty told the kids they were proud to be orphans and to shout it. Damn, all right, damn it, get in here, or bye. When the others broke up, Rusty yelled at them. Why Hardy hadn't shouted with the others. Hardy said that he didn't want to yell back. Things like that are silly. At the end of the day, orphans still seemed like poor kids. Day after day went by until the day of the second match. In this game, the Masonic home team tried to use their new formation outside to Hardy Brown. Takes it up and down the sideline. So far, so good. He is. He, he is. Things don't look good, coach. Dang it. So clean and smiling, touching, standing. You later. Teach a fat ass and cut orphan down by surprise. The Masonic team won because little princess Rusty came up with a new formation on the way home. Shortly after another school bus stopped and made fun of the Masonic, Rusty's car broke down. Even their football coach, Luther, made fun of them by saying that the orphans couldn't beat his team. From a good college, when Rusty heard what Luther said, all he could do was wait. As the days went by, word of how the Masonic home 12 orphans won and how their team was put together was spread all over America. Because it was in the news, a lot of people came just to see Masonic play live in the locker room before the game. Rusty did it on purpose to get his team worked up. He had already said that. The coach of the other team said that Masonic Home would definitely win. Rusty's taunts were enough to make them angry. On our field, he has to get separated, score, or you have to sandbag me on Mark Snugs. The game is over, ladies and gentlemen, and we won yesterday. It was always victory after victory. Stories about orphans who can win over and over again without ever losing go viral and give a lot of people hope, especially other orphans in the Texas area. One day, a woman came to the orphanage looking for her Masonic Home player son, CD. The woman cried and told her son that she regretted leaving him at the orphanage, but CD refused to go home. Now that he is a well-known football player, he knows his mother is coming. CD is so sad. He had been hoping for years that his mother would come back to get him. But his mother doesn't seem to have changed. You are both. Don't panic. Hardy gave CD a hug and told him he wasn't alone when he saw how sad his friend was. Everyone here, including Hardy, knows how CD feels. All of them know how painful it is to be abandoned by their own mother. It was a win for Team Masonic Home. Still continue. Rusty's formation is so unique that no other team has yet been able to beat it. Americans have always been eager to hear about their victory. Rusty's dream of making this orphanage a better place for the kids who lived there slowly started to come true. The next day, the head of the orphanage gave a donation of football uniforms from another school team to a fellow tournament participant. The head of the orphanage explained that because the money wasn't enough to buy a football uniform, he took the initiative to ask another school for clothes to replace the old Masonic football. When the orphanage leader left, Rusty saw Doc drinking. Rusty throws away the drink and tells Doc to set a good example for the students. If the kids kept seeing Doc drink too much, they would get drunk one day too. Doc was quiet when he heard what Rusty said. On the other hand, Frank is seen meeting with Luther, the coach of the team Masonic will play in the semifinals. In secret, Luther paid Frank to find something wrong with the Masonic team so that they would be kicked out of the tournament. Frank shows papers about Hardy's real life. In the document, Hardy's age is written one year older, meaning the Masonic team has violated the rules of the league tournament. The semi-final game was the following week. This time, Team Luther plays football against Masonic home, just like the last time. By the point, Masonic did it with ease, even though his team almost lost. Luther employed. He told his players to hurt the other team's players. I didn't meet it. Hall rushed to his shot. Carlos, put the devil on a stretcher. All right, here we go, gentlemen. Three. But even though Masonic Holmes was short one player, they still beat Luther's by a lot. That night, Frank ran into the boys' dorm room at the orphanage out of the blue. He pulled one of the students behind him and beat him with a wooden stick until he was bloody. Satisfied, he said that this was his punishment for peeking into the girl's dorm. Frank left, and Hardy, who was angry that his friend was being tortured, hit Frank in the back with Frank's own wooden stick until it broke. Just like Frank, satisfied, Hardy left. The following morning, Rusty was shocked when he saw in the newspaper that the Masonic home team had been kicked off the team because including Hardy, who was one year older than the other kids on the team, was seen as cheating. When he went to tell Doc, he didn't know why one of the students was so beat up. After hearing that Frank was beaten last night, Rusty went to tell the head of the orphanage. However, when Rusty got there, Frank had already made up a story about what happened last night. Then he told Hardy, but Rusty wasn't interested. He kept telling the students' story about all the violent things Frank had done. The head of the orphanage doesn't trust Frank as much as he should because he is a newer teacher. When Rusty got home and heard what the head of the orphanage had said, he was very upset. He told Juanita everything. Rusty was very tired and couldn't take fighting alone any longer after seeing how desperate her husband was. Juanita then gave a stack of letters of support from Masonic home fans, who always came from different parts of the country for two weeks in a row. 
Juanita told Rusty that he wasn't the only one out there. So many people back him, even though they have never met him. All of the Masonic Home Team members came up to Hardy while he was reading a letter on the terrace of the house. They told him that since what happened last night, Hardy had gone missing and hadn't gone back to the orphanage. Rusty was sure that Hardy would go back to his old house when he heard the news. Rusty found Hardy at the house where his biological mother had left him alone with his father's body in a stable. Then he tells his own story. He had been scared in the past, just like Hardy. Rusty saw her brother die in front of her eyes on the battlefield, right when her brother died. He thought there would be no one in this world he could call home anymore. But the story made Hardy mad because he thought it was unfair. Rusty was better, and the pain had been gone for a long time. Even though he still has trouble, Rusty gave Hardy a hug and made him feel better. At the time, all of the orphans from the Masonic home came at once. Hardy was sent back to an orphanage. The next day, Hardy went to the orphanage that will always be his home. Since word got out that the Masonic home team was kicked out, many people protested and asked the Football League to change its mind. To the surprise of one country, the league did just that. There was a meeting of the Interschool League. The league chairman told him that Hardy's age was too old according to his birth certificate. Hardy checked and told the chairman that the birth certificate was for his late brother, who had died a long time ago. So all of the boys in the Hardy family have the same name. Hardy Brown is the name of the father. Hardy Brown is also the name of his brother, whose name is also Hardy Brown. 3. But even after being told, the league chairman still wanted to kick the Masonic team out of the league. It turned out that Luther also gave money to the chairman of the league, just like he did to Frank. When it was almost time to make a decision, the secretary told him that the president had just called because this news had shocked the public. The president chose to leave office. On the phone, the president, who knows there must be a dirty game going on inside, tells the chairman that if he doesn't let the Masonic home team stay in the league, he will fire him right away. The chairman hears a threatening voice from the leader of the United States. The league chairman was very scared and said right away that the Masonic home team wouldn't be kicked out of the league. Has been overturned. When the Masonic home team was about to leave the next day for the final game, which was going to be held outside of the city, everyone was surprised when the police showed up at the beginning. Hardy was afraid that if he beat Frank like that, he would get arrested. But it seems that the police told him to win and bring a trophy to this orphanage. The officer then kept going until he reached Frank's office. When he got there, the police told him that they had a report about Frank abusing children and torturing people for years. Frank and a lot of evidence are taken to the police station in the end, but in the first round of this final match, the other team was very tough. For the first time, their special formation could not get through the other team's defenses. The score for the other team is, and the whole Masonic home team got beaten up. Right there, I'm going to knock seat. You'll tell me to block, right. We're looking. Hey, you. Regardless of how hard we try. Not so strong. What are you saying, coach? I'm a strong warrior. Rusty just stood still and looked at his students. Everyone put the blame on each other and told each other how bad they felt. They are no longer able to play. In the middle of all the chaos in the dressing room, Hardy pulled at his own broken finger and shouted, I'm proud to be an orphan. For a moment, there was nothing but silence. Hardy had always been afraid to say that sentence, but he finally did. He used to think they couldn't win because they were outcasts and orphans, but he was wrong. After a lot of hard work, it turns out that the Masonic home orphan team can make it to the... So, he started to believe, and he told everyone else to keep believing and not give up. Hardy asked that none of the orphans give up until the end. These were only small wounds that couldn't kill the warrior orphan's fighting spirit. Just like when they heard Hardy's words, the fire of the Masonic home team's fighting spirit started up again the day we were born. You've got another half to get off your sandy behind and move on. When Doc saw how excited his students were, he was blown away. Doc, who has always been hooked on drinking, decides to stop and throws away his drink. Finish coming up with a plan. The Masonic kids then began the second round of the game. Now he has to get rid of that guy. Vince is not doing much to help the Sandy. Come, come. Hardy was able to score a touchdown, which gave the Masonic home team six points. When the crowd saw how hard they were trying, everyone got caught up in the mood and cheered for them. Now, the provisional score is 7-6, which is a difference of only one point. In the last few minutes, the winner will be the team that scores first. We still have one more chance. Hardy gets a short pass. Put it inside. Son. Then, Rusty asked for a break so he could change. This time, Masonic will play a trick because the other team already knows that Hardy will definitely bring the ball. Then they should just go after Hardy. He just ran without the ball, though. Ceiling's going to run itself. In fact, another Masonic player was the one who had the ball. Their plan worked out well. The Masonic team was able to cross the finish line of the other team. Now, they only have seven seconds to get the ball to the goal line. In the last few seconds of desperation, Rusty told the kids to go outside and play. They are told to have fun with the game. Whether they win or lose doesn't matter. The most important thing is that they play with confidence and big smiles on their faces. They have to show the community that orphans are the children of fighters. Yeah, you can do the snugs, buddy. Boys, okay, boy, come on. Uggs, please, go, please. Oh, really? Hardy didn't get a touchdown, but there were only three inches left. 
the Masonic team at home lost by a score of 7-6. But even though the other team was upset, the players, commentators, and people in the crowd cheered for Masonic home. The story of a group of 12 orphans who started with nothing and ended up doing more than they could have ever imagined. Masonic homes can't win a title that can be printed in the paper, but the story of their struggle will always be etched in people's hearts. On the way home, Hardy said he was sorry. He still felt bad about not getting the last point. When Rusty heard that, he said that what Hardy and the kids had done so far was better than he had hoped. When the Masonic home team teacher got to the orphanage, everyone was very happy to see them. Rusty brings more than just sports and school lessons to this orphanage. The orphans learn from Rusty. They show what it was like to be a family and are almost as good as Fairbanks. Okay, doctor, you're needed for the picture. I'll be there right away. Last week, they left something in that went against all evidence and odds. 